Hello grade tens. So far we have investigated the reactions of metals and metal compounds in this series. So far we have started to develop the skill of how to write balanced chemical equations. A balanced chemical equation is the starting point of all quantitative studies in chemistry such as finding the mass of a product formed in a reaction or how much acid to use to find the concentration of a base. Diasha will recap one of the techniques we use to help you develop the skill of balancing chemical equations. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to practice this skill. So let's recap how it is done. We have asked a learner to help us with this and we will use the reaction of copper burning in oxygen as an example. We know that metals burn in oxygen to form a metal oxide. So our first step is to write a word equation for the reaction. Copper plus oxygen react to form copper oxide. Step two is to change the word equation to a chemical equation. The symbol for copper is Cu. Oxygen O is always found as a diatomic molecule and one copper atom reacts with one oxygen atom to form copper oxide. Lastly, we have to count the amount of atoms of each element on each side of the arrow. We can see that we have only one oxygen atom in the product but two as reactants. If we add another copper oxide particle to the product, the oxygen atoms are balanced. But now we have two copper atoms in the product and only one as a reactant. If we now add one more copper atom to the left of the arrow, our equation is balanced. Did you notice something important missing from the balanced chemical equation for the reaction of copper with oxygen? Take a careful look again. What has been left out in this balanced chemical equation? Did you notice that the phases of reactants and products were not included? You must remember to always include the phases when you write a balanced chemical equation. So, 2 Cu open brackets S close brackets plus O 2 open brackets G close brackets reacts to form 2 CuO open brackets S close brackets. By now, however, you should be able to balance chemical equation by inspection. In today's lesson, you will be able to practice this skill. You will need to describe the reactions of non-metals in oxygen and the reactions of their oxides in water and write balanced chemical equations for these reactions. Let's cross over to Diasha to describe the reactions of non-metals with oxygen and what happens when these products react with water. The reactions that we will look at in today's lesson are called combustion reactions. That means that we will look at how quickly and how vigorously the elements that we are testing reacts when it burns in air and in pure oxygen. Our first combustion reaction we're going to look at is the reaction of carbon when it is burnt in air. I've placed some carbon here on a combustion spoon and now I'm going to heat it in a Bunsen burner. Notice it doesn't burn by itself, but it just starts to glow slightly. Now let's repeat this experiment by burning the carbon in pure oxygen. I've collected some oxygen in this gas jar here and I'm going to plunge the burning carbon into it. If you do this, please make sure that you seal the gas jar carefully with a combustion spoon so that no products escape. Are you ready? Watch and see what happens. The carbon burns with a bright orange glow, but no other product seems to be formed. But that can't be right. Let's go and have a look at the equation to see if it gives us a clue to what's happening. Carbon reacts with oxygen to form an oxide of carbon. We write this as CO2. This is a colorless gas called carbon dioxide. Although we can't see it, we can test for it using clear lime water. 
When carbon dioxide is bubbled through lime water, it turns milky. Let's do that test right now. I have some carbon here in this test tube and it's linked by a rubber tube to another test tube with some clear lime water in it. I'm going to heat the carbon over the Bunsen burner and any gas product that is formed is going to bubble through the lime water. Can you see that the lime water has turned milky? This confirms that carbon dioxide is a product of the reaction. Let's have another look at that equation. Carbon plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide. Remember, di refers to the two oxygens attached to the carbon, and oxygen occurs as a diatomic molecule, so this equation is balanced. I've replaced the carbon with sulfur, and we're now going to watch as we heat it in air. The sulfur starts to melt quite soon. Look out for a light blue flame that may develop when the sulfur gets burning. It's giving off a gas. I can start to smell it. Notice the blue flame. Even when it's not in the Bunsen burner, can you see the flame? I'm now going to plunge this into pure oxygen. Watch carefully what happens. Oh, that is a wonderful blue flame there. And there's definitely a strong gas. Oh, it's making me choke. It's not very pleasant at all. Did you see that sulfur burnt much more vigorously in pure oxygen than in air? Now it's time to move on to our next experiment. The next element we're going to look at is phosphorus. Remember, this is very reactive, so I'm going to have to work very quickly. I'm taking the white phosphorus out of the water, and notice, even without being heated by the Bunsen burner, it's starting to produce white fumes. If I left it for any longer, it could even burst into flame. I'm going to just quickly pass it through the Bunsen burner, getting it a little bit hot, and then plunge it into the gas jar with pure oxygen. Do you see the white choking fumes and the bright glowing flame? It is also very important that you are able to write balanced chemical equations for the reactions that you see. So let's discuss what happened during our tests. In the first experiment, John showed you that carbon reacted with oxygen to form a colorless gas carbon dioxide. This gas has the chemical formula CO2. When sulfur reacts with oxygen, it also forms a colorless gas called sulfur dioxide. Now I am sure that you at one time or another have caught a whiff of a sharp smell that burns your nose slightly, especially if you have ever been near a coal burning factory. This smell is characteristic of sulfur dioxide and this gas is actually quite harmful to the environment. In our last test however the results were slightly different. Thick choking fumes and a fine white powder formed as the product. This is because phosphorus reacts with oxygen to form a more complex compound called phosphorus pentoxide. The prefix pent means five, and in this case, five oxygen atoms react with two phosphorus atoms to form this very unpleasant compound with its choking smell. Do you think that you could write the balanced chemical equations for these two equations? The reaction for sulfur and oxygen is S plus O2 react to form SO2. This reaction is already balanced. The reaction for phosphorus is a little more complicated. It reads P plus O2 react to form P2O5. To balance this reaction, we need to add four phosphorus atoms and five oxygen molecules to the left of the equation 
and two phosphorus pentoxide particles to the right. So the balanced chemical equation is 4P plus 5O2 react to form 2P2O5. You should remember that when we investigated the reactions of metals in oxygen, we dissolved the metal oxides in water. We then tested these solutions with an indicator called blue litmus paper and found that they formed basic solutions that turned the blue indicator red. In today's lesson, we will repeat the exact same experiment with the non-metal oxides that John saved in the sealed gas jars. We will, however, use a different indicator called bromothymol blue. This indicator is a blue color in an alkali but turns yellow when added to an acid or an acidic solution. Have a look at the results we may expect. In this beaker I have a little acid and in this beaker I have an alkali. Look what happens as I add the bromothymol blue. Do you see the yellow color in the acid and the blue color in the alkali? Do you think that you could predict what we will see when we test the non-metal oxide solutions? Well, John is ready in the lab. Let's go and find out. We've got some learners to join me to do the experiments with me. I want to introduce you to Geke, Ngobele and Colleen. Welcome. Hello, Hi, John. John. Right, remember in last lesson, we burnt the non-metals in oxygen. I've kept the products of the reaction in gas jars. They're sealed, so nothing can contaminate them. Geke, I've given you the gas jar with carbon dioxide. Nobele, yours has got sulfur dioxide. Okay. And Colleen, yours has got phosphorus pentoxide. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take some water, Put it into the gas jar, close the lid quickly so none of the gas escapes, and then swirl it around and make careful observations. Shall we give it a try? Yeah, okay. sure. Okay, let's go. Okay. There you go. Gekke, do you notice anything happening? Well, John, the solution has stayed colorless, so I guess it means that the carbon dioxide has dissolved in the water. That's right. How about testing it with bromothymol blue? Okay. What do you notice happening now? Well, it seems to be turning very pale yellow. So would it be safe to say that the solution is now acidic? That's absolutely right. Well done. Now, can any of you think of an acid with the name carbon in it? How about carbonic acid? Ah, oh, yes, that's found in soda water. That's absolutely right. Most fizzy drinks have carbonic acid in it, and it's sometimes called carbonated water. Oh. Now, Nobele, why don't you try and do exactly what Gekke has done? All right. Give it a swirl. Well, we seem to have a clear solution. Shall I check if it's acidic? That's a good idea. Use the bromothymol blue. All right. And in the meantime, Colleen, why don't you add water to your gas jar? Okay. Oh, it's gone bright yellow. That's right. So does this mean it's sulfuric acid? Now that's a very interesting point. In fact, it's formed sulfurous acid. Sulfuric acid is only made in industry when sulfur trioxide dissolves in water. John, it looks like I also have an acidic solution. That's right. And the name of that acid is? Phosphoric acid. That's absolutely right. Great. Now it's time to look at the equations of these reactions. Now, 
when water combines with carbon dioxide, it gives us carbonic acid. Let's work out the formula. We have two hydrogens on this side, so let's put two hydrogens down on this side. We have one carbon over here, so that's one carbon over there. Three oxygens on this side, so there must be three oxygens afterwards. This is the formula for carbonic acid. Now, can you predict what the formula will be for sulfurous acid? Is it H2SO3? That's absolutely right. Let me write it down. Now, when water combines with phosphorus pentoxide, it forms phosphoric acid, which is a little bit more tricky. Formula is H3PO4. But there's something not quite right with this equation. John, it's not balanced. That's good. Would anybody like to try and balance it for me? Come on, Geke, give it a try at the board. Okay. Now, like Colleen said, this is an imbalanced equation. So, because I've got one phosphorus on that side, and yet I have two on this other side, I will need to balance it by adding another two on this side. Now, this two will affect the hydrogen and making it become six hydrogens, so I'll need to balance it by adding another three on this side. Now, this three will mean that I have three oxygens on this side, plus this five oxygens will give me eight oxygens, and then add it to the four times by the two oxygens will give me eight on that side as well. So John, I think this is pretty balanced. What do you say? That's fabulous. You've got it right. Thank you so much for joining me today. Why don't you have one more look at the balanced equations? Well, we should say a huge thank you to John and the learners for showing us those experiments. Remember, I told you earlier that all the metal oxides dissolved to form a basic metal hydroxide. So, if you were to hear the term basic oxide, you should be thinking of a metal oxide. Today, we have discovered that all the non-metal oxides dissolve in water to form an acidic solution. So from now on, when you hear the term acidic oxide, you should be thinking of a non-metal oxide. This is important. Write it down. Now that we know the important facts about non-metal oxides, it is time to find out how they affect our lives. Both carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide are major pollutants of the air. They are produced in large quantities by cars and large coal-burning industries. These gases react with moisture found in the atmosphere to form acid rain. This acid rain destroys plants and buildings over a period of time. It also affects the lungs and the respiratory systems of people that come in frequent contact with these gases. Thanks, Diasha and John. In this lesson, we looked at the reactions of non-metals with oxygen and the reaction of non-metal oxides with water. You should be able to write balanced chemical equations too. John mentioned that sulfuric acid is made in industry when sulfur trioxide is reacted with water in large processing plants like this. You can practice this skill by writing out balanced chemical equations for the reactions that produce sulfuric acid in the task video on representing chemical change. And visit the Mindset website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Join us next time in our last lesson in this series. Until then, goodbye.